Hello, and <laughs> welcome to Common Sanity, episode four, I think. Although, as you know, Al, there was a lost episode, which one day will be retrieved using digital technology. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? Al Murray is back for his second attempt. Well, you oh, say no. it was lost. I think it may well have, it may well be that the, it was binned. The wasn't archive, it? It was whatever the archive the digital rejected it. <laughs> 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 we now have to know what happened. We recorded an episode. Al Murray, myself, Mark Watson, and Tony Law, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, and it, it should have been fine. Good. But it was a Zoom episode. I should stop looking at the camera now. We'll see you after the show. I've got to learn to not do that. <laughs> it was a Zoom episode, and, and I don't think everyone's home recording technique was oh. up to scratch, was no. it? And there was... Uh, Tony, ironically, was the worst, even though he streams every night. Yeah. But he gets a, a viewing public in, in double digits if he's lucky. Yeah. On that <laughs> uh, yeah, we, yeah, it didn't record it. And also, everyone came on at different times and... Yeah, uh, uh, and ate their land at different points. And I, I ate my caponata not as a starter. <laughs> oh, completely yeah. outrageous. Yeah. Clue is in the name, Al. <laughs> you used to work with Harry Hill. You should remember that yeah, caponata, that's a starter. <laughs> Killer. You're you're all right, Rory, because there's no um, oh, responsibility. Sorry. You're going to be served by the waiter. You know. Well, I need to know the, the memos about caponatas and how you eat them. They'll <laughs> arrive in the order in which you're meant to eat. That's all that you need to know about. Good. Tracy Ann, your preferences have been observed. What's a caponata? I don't know. I don't know if it involves shellfish. It oh. might do. Oh, well, I'll eat anything. There will be I'm some eating be around picky. you. I'm no, so no, glad no, you no. asked. I was pretending. I, I was like, it's yeah. a machine. Is it that all it is? I want to go. When did you work with Harry Hill? Did you use a tour with him? Oh gosh, yeah. I started out. Most of the early stuff I did, certainly the first telly I did was with Harry. Was it? In the in the in the very late nineties. It was was you and Dave Thompson are the main two uh, veterans of Harry. But Dave was always in a horse (laughs) outfit. That was the that was the aubergine years. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Because I saw Al's probably the very first time you came to London and did um, uh, yeah. uh, and did The Landlord. I remember yeah. see, uh, coming with Lucy Lumsden. Were you with me? Yeah. We saw him in the Crouch End when we were both studying stand-up. Oh, yes. When we did a Thursday night we at did. the Crouch End King's Head yes. and we were there en masse with Jill Edwards yes. who was teaching us a stand-up class. There were about 20 of us yeah. and this was how you do it. And Thursday night was the open spot night but yeah. then at the end they have a paid act and yeah. he literally said as they used to in the early days I'm afraid our headline act has not yeah. been able to show up but the pub landlord oh. has offered yes. to do a set that's and that's, what, that's that's how it used to, that's no, what no, we used to do. There was no Never Believe me there was complete dismay. Every, everyone like felt that? that this was a genuine let down yeah, and we and were very, going to try and, and patch it up. enough when I was starting out, I used to use, it seemed to me like a pretty sensible device that. Yeah. But, yeah. but often enough that you'd have people go, well, well <laughs> might as well go. Why is yeah. it You're talking crap, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I came here for the Chuckle Brothers. Yeah. 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 Wasn't it the Meccano Club we used to go to as well on a yes. Tuesday to go yeah. and watch the um, lesser known people like Eddie Izzard and Paul Merton oh, try out? Yeah, yeah material wasn't that right i remember seeing well i certainly remember seeing simon munnery inventing his oh, new thus yeah. zarathustra club zarathustra thing yeah and nobody knew what to make of that at all yeah the ceiling was very low in the mccona that yes, was my main was. yeah i had about an inch an inch of uh of leeway in there and if i got too excited i'd scuff my head on the yeah and it was deliberately rough as well it was a sort of it was a sort of art so were you working with Harry before all of yeah, that? Yeah, well, the pub landlord came about from working with Harry. So we were, but I met him on weekending. I mean, this, you know, this, is, a, this is archaeology. Yes. This, Ooh, yeah, I'm yeah. Starting, yeah. With, starting with some proper archaeology here. Well, it leads into what, I, what, I've, what I've already predetermined will be the theme. So right, that's okay. well, that well, so, coming so in so about we, 20 we minutes. Met on, so we met on well, that. Theme, well done. Uh, uh, so they won't know weekending was, at a, oh, yeah. it was a weekly oh, yeah. satire. That was my show. first crack. I remember weekend. Well, yeah. 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 My first job. Yeah. That was like unsolicited. That was like the slush pile, wasn't it? Open house. So you go in on, on I think, Wednesday at 11 and just pitch. Yeah. And then if you got commissioned, you, you're going at 12, you know, like... Uh, it's like people standing outside the factory gates in the 1840s <laughs> yes, yes, or something. Exactly. <laughs> it was, it was exactly like that. But it was all... But, but, um, and there's someone's done a book... Someone's done an episode-by-episode episode book called Prime Minister You Wanted to See Me or something like that, and which lists literally everybody <laughs> who worked all on come it. come back yeah. to me. That uh, single phrase, that's Well, because exactly. Harry, Harry, Harry's writing a memoir, and he rang me the other day and said, where, where, did, where did we meet? And I got this book out and said, here it is, it's that it was that week. Wow. And he so we just hit it off on that on that show. Every week he would pitch um, if there was a British rail story, he would pitch an enormous conquer rolling across <laughs> Because um, it was leaves on the line, so he would pitch right. the idea of an enormous conquer, <laughs> enormous conquer blocking a tunnel. Right? 
And me and the guy That's I wrote with, without fail, we would pitch a story about um, the UN white helmets being a motorcycle display team. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and every week we'd pitch it, and you get a new producer every eight weeks. Yeah. So that they wouldn't be wise to it. The first <laughs> <couple of> <laughs> I think in the end, I think we got that. I think we did get that on in the end. All those kind of shows, because the 11 o'clock show, which was at least 10 years after that folding, but it had exactly the same approach. There was yeah. a huge pile of stuff. There was a poster on the wall. I remember Les Keane used to run the writing yeah, room there. There was a poster on the wall with all the co core propositions to which this, this show believes. Oh, right. John Prescott eats too many pies. You know, oh, they were really oh, basic. Oh, that oh. This, was, this was like the Bible. You couldn't transgress at this. <laughs> there was to be no ironic counterpoint to any of that. You know, these are our propositions. You must have got work on yeah, those shows, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was the first one I did. I got the call at 84. I just finished my finals. Uh, I remember actually standing in the street where we are now. I was right. talking to somebody saying, they're over, they're done. Because it's London University. And I got a call a couple of days after that, and I thought it was a piss take. But they were saying, no, no, really, I'm mean, the producer of Weekending, will you come on the show? So there I was, and there was David Tate. And How would yeah, they Wallace, become aware of you as a... Because I was on the, on the circuit doing impressions on the circuit. Right, so right. They, you know, they, there were so many researchers. Sally Grace. It, yeah, Sally Grace, Sally David Tate. Sally Grace, names, my yeah. God. And Bill Wallace, that's right, yeah. those are the three. Wow. And so I went on with George Michael and Neil Kinnock or something, because they're very similar. Can you characters. do George Michael <laughs> <laughs> no, as a the, voice? That's the one I've got. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. anyway. Um, but boy, the, the writers on the but Jeremy Hardy was writing for yeah. that yeah. time. For that time, and I mean, there were so many. Uh, Ian, um, oh God, Ian Brown, yeah. and um, so many of the, the writers who went on to do a lot of stuff. Andy Hamilton, of course. Yeah. Um, and just it was a breeding ground for so many brilliant writers who went on to do so much. So yeah. John Langdon, the greatest, you know, my yeah. great friend and writer, who died last year. Yeah, I remember and that. He got yes. BBC taken to court because he wrote the sketch about, about uh, Derek Jameson the newspaper editor and said yeah. that you know, he was a guy who thought that erudite was a type of glue <laughs> <laughs> and said an archetypal East End boy made bad and it was, it was just puns as he said and anyway yeah. James took the BBC to court and lost the BBC won the case uh, good and then, and then for some reason just employed him ever since to, I think to sort of they thought didn't BBC he used to be on Radio 2 was he yeah, like they gave the whole series yeah. I think Ro it was Ro like, Ro yeah, Ro yeah. Ro 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 are you going to do impressions on this? I well, I, <laughs> I thought somebody's got to get the ball rolling, Rory. <laughs> but You're yeah, naturally so, reluctant. But actually, the funny thing about that, and I'll say, because it's about a year, almost to the day, since John died, um, and he, in the corridor, he had a joke format named after him. So, yeah. which writers were those, the Langdon. Yeah. The Langdon. The Langdon is a classic form of joke where you might say, um, Boris Johnson and his fiance uh, introduced their new puppy to the world today. Uh, He's not house trained and he'll yeah. pump anything that moves, said the dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yes, yes. He's yes. taking me one direction and then, then or the other. Or <laughs> and, um, and that was a Langdon, amongst many other things. That, wow. uh, God, he was brilliant. Did you get on that show? Well, I never, I come from such a different route. Simon yeah. and I met, I, I was an actor, you know, I left drama school and university and went into acting. I went straight to the RSC for four years. And then after the RSC, you would change my life. Because yeah. I met Simon on this stand up comedy course with Ashley Broder and a bloke oh, called yes. Paul Foot. And you and I became really good mates. And I remember good, good. going oh, to hold see. It oh, got it. Isn't oh, it? Yeah. oh, sorry. That's right. Don't have yeah. I wanted to, I don't know why I went. I just want to know about, thank you, writing comedy. And then ended up down this comedy world with you. And I remember taking you to see Wind in the Willows at the National, <laughs> weeping, going, I, I just, why wasn't I in that? And I remember you in the green room afterwards saying to me, Are you mad? And I said, What? You went, do you want to play a fucking bunny with no lines? <laughs> and I get into stand up and I went, but it's, it's hard, it's Adam Bennett, it's Nicola Hyde. I saw, I saw that. Nick Hyde, now that's what I want to do. And you went, no, you don't. No. And after that, I walked away and I thought, yeah, maybe I don't want to play a fucking bunny with no lines. It's hard. To, I mean, the, the distance between stand up and actor. I do remember the bunny actor. actor. I mean, it, 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 I remember it was a wonderful production. It was yeah. wonderful. But I do remember you going, you're out of your mind. You can be in control of your own. It's all the, always a bellwether of society, though, isn't it? How it produces Wind in the Willows. There's been there's a new production every 10 years, and it tells you more about what's, what's going, going on. on. Yeah. I'm going to write a book about that one of these days. And he gets a yeah. yeah. That's right. Watered down to Rufus Hound bouncing <laughs> around. I think that's Al's new podcast, is War of the Willows. War of the Willows. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't your daughter called Willow, though? I have a daughter called Willow, yes. Yeah, so you can't do she War can of write the Willows. She can take exception <laughs> to that. But I only, I, the aim of Jill's course, in the stand-up mm. comedy course, was to end up writing. You'd have to go and watch all this stuff. You had to go three or four times a week to understand the mechanics of writing a set. Yeah. 
I mean, the aim of it was that we'd all end up writing a set and we'd all sort of start our careers as stand-ups. And I, I, I still know my first gag. So I ended up, but it was as an actor head and a stand-up head, it's a very different thing. I, I always remember you and I discussing mm. this long into the night stoned off our tits going because acting was about the alchemy of being with another person and creating something with another yeah, person yeah, yeah. that was so lonely and frightening and horrible to be on your own with just your material I found nothing well, pleasurable say, about it I mean clearly you can teach acting uh, clearly but can you teach comedy or can you teach show because when, when I hear somebody's doing comedy class I think is it not instinctive or but clearly you, you well, can't, can't, yeah. well I think you probably you, you teach it in the same way that Michelangelo teaches a boulder to become <laughs> David you know you have to remove all the bits that aren't a stand up and, and then if there is some stand up left after that then you've got then you've got a proposition. Yeah, I mean, she know. boiled it down to the essence of you. And so you'd go and see people like mm. you, and you know, that she, the, the aim of it was to sort of click, she would say it looks so spontaneous. And it, this stuff has been honed and honed and honed. I tell honed. you the, the process that she taught us, and it does work, but when you realize how laborious it is, yeah. you, you realize why once people have got a bit of momentum in their career, they stop doing this. It was called rant and rave. Did you ever oh, practice yeah. this? Oh. So this is what you have to do. It, you, you get yourself a, a, a little voice recorder and you start wandering around in the park or whatever, ranting on this thing as spontaneously as you can, but you pick a phrase that you return to so that you don't just meander off in any direction. So maybe it is, I really can't stand people wearing leisure wear or something, you know, in public. Something, something just can be quite tiny yeah. like that, or it might be, I hate Boris Johnson, but let's say leisure wear. I hate people wearing leisure wear in public. It just, it, it insults me. I feel as though I don't exist. I hate people wearing leisure wear in public. If, if, if we can't even be bothered to get dressed in the morning, what chance have we got of beating a virus? And, and you just try <laughs> and come out with as many things as you can. Then you go home and you type them all up, Right. And then you come in next week in front of the audience, the, which is to say the other would-be stand-ups, and you read it out to them in quite a flat voice. You don't try and perform it. You just kind of deliver it as though you were still in the park. And you record that, and you notice where they laugh. And wow. those are the bits that work. And you go back home, and you trim out the rubbish. It was a proper I mean, it, dissertation. It is so... You see, I get, I get all um, uh, the mention of it being taught classes and yeah degrees I get I get terribly sort of defensive so it, it just can't be the only way to learn it is to do I'm it you, you know all, uh, but, no, but, but but obviously there's some quite brilliant people who have come through courses and stuff yeah and so I get I get all I get I get all you know you luddite about it or yeah. something but yeah. actually, yeah, I, I took one on, on tour a couple of years ago and, and you, our regular support couldn't make us fed I think Fred McCauley was unavailable, <laughs> and so we, and Paul Silky White stood in, and he teaches comedy. And as we and I drove him across North Wales the next morning, it was beautiful, it was a gorgeous, beautiful day, and a beautiful part of Wales which he knew very well. And I thought, I said, okay, well, so tell me, you know, you teach comedy, well, tell me what, where, what, what should I, what should I do? And he, he gave me one note, it was brilliant. He said, you should just be more playful, just be more playful, and it was a really good note because you know you, you can. So sort of take it so you can sometimes be a little bit locked in on your own performance uh, yeah. and don't, not, not necessarily listening enough to the audience. But if you sort of just relax a little bit more and enjoy it. It must be hard though if you're an impressionist, and maybe I'm projecting this, but I sense if you're an impressionist doing a, a series of impressions over the course of an evening, every single one is like you're producing another jewel you know, for display. And, and every single time the audience might go, well, the last 28 were great, but this one's a bit, no, I'm not, I'm not seeing that, sorry, mate. You know, you it's can- It's an interesting one, is it? Because it works both ways, because this is what, you know, I think we, I, I sense we're moving towards your theme. <laughs> Of characters. <laughs> so the thing is, because I, I, with Al, because of course with with the pub landlord, um, I remember once doing a show in Harrogate. And it was Mackenzie. It was Mackenzie Cook, mm. and he had a, a teacher character. That's right. Play, and he came out as this teacher. It was one of the early times he he, he had done it. Mm. But I realised that so ten minutes in, because that was he didn't have anywhere to go with it. Because if they didn't like that character, yeah. But as an impressionist, he have always got another one coming along. Yes, that's but true. As well, as yeah. a, and also, you know. Oh, you always want the material to be as good, but anyway, you've always got, you've got the voices to kind of fall back on mm. in a way. So, 
so what you're saying about being judged can be a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. If, it's, you know, if, you, if you do a good impression, people will laugh just at the fact that it sounds yeah. like so-and-so. But you're right, if, if you get it wrong. I mean, I think it's always, go, well, good, it's always good to be playful. That, would, that note would always work, but it, I can understand why you might feel more, ang might be, you know, I suppose just have you more know, anxiety. Then it would be how ways. you frame it a little bit. Yeah. But it's just that I think it's more important, although you're doing the characters, that you have a point of view behind them. I've got a question. Uh, and I don't know whether you've done any acting, but when you did the Pub Landlord series or when you've played yeah. a part, is there something that... What, what's, your, what's your feeling about, do you feel like this is uncomfortable or actually I quite prefer playing a, acting as opposed to standing? So my acting was definitely in inverted commas. Okay. <laughs> I did a rock as Al can say, I know it's going to say, very, very, very quickly, um, but there was a terrible casting right. mistake, Trevor Nunn put me <laughs> in a play, a Noel Coward thing. Which one? <clears throat> Present Love? Mustn't Trevor. It was a Relative Values, oh. and with Caroline Quinton and Patricia Hodge. Wow. And it was brilliant. It was just. Did you fun, love it? I yeah. loved it, but um, and sorry, I was just the no, no, no. thing about acting was because you know I I kind of I would sort of tend to try and fall back. Uh, I really. Uh, I was, well, oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, playing I, a butler, and after a while, some I, sort of up, <laughs> I wanted to give him an upstairs voice and a downstairs voice. Okay. And the upstairs voice sounded remarkably like John Fortune. <laughs> but anyway, but so I kind of thought, well, I'm going to have to rely on. Two, no, I'm going to have to rely on um, sort of just have I got an ear for uh, what sort of character I want to do. But the only time I felt it was acting was on stage with Caroline, and she and Patricia Hodge had very different um, ways and styles. Patricia Hodge would hone during rehearsal her perfect performance, so she would get it absolutely exactly how she wanted every intonation, every movement, every muscle memory, and then repeat that throughout the run because that was the perfect blend. That yeah. was that like, Caroline loved to improvise. She loved to just throw in something spontaneous. She loved to kind of. So sometimes you turn up at a different part of the stage, and old school Yikes. actors think they get they get really upset because your muscle memory is you know you deliver the line to somebody there. Yeah. But, but the one time, so I was the butler and she was the maid, mm. and she said something slightly in a slightly different tone of voice. She said something like, um, uh, like something like, "Well, why didn't you look for it?" And she hadn't done that before, so I just heard myself say, "Kitty didn't ask me to," <laughs> and I'd never done it that way before, but it was. Suddenly, it, and her, I do, it was what I saw in her eyes because it was like a flash of lighting for her, and it was like you. I reacted to her in car in that moment because yeah. she said something, and it was like real life. It was yeah. as you were yes, so reacted to, without any um, artifice, anything without it going through any process. It was somebody reacting spontaneously to somebody else. Also, and I walked off in the days. This the is what this said, is what happened, and I said, "Well, that's never happened before." And it just came out like that, and she just said. Congratulations, yes. you're an actor. Exactly. And I tried to do the same the next night. And as a performance, as a, as a form, as a, as a did you find it liberating? Did you think, oh, that's so much happier on my own on the stage? Um, I, I, well, both, actually. Sorry to say, but I mean, I loved it because it was an old coward, so of course mm -hmm. it's really good stuff, and he loved his lines, and, and you don't... Um, there's, there's positives and negatives and anything. So you didn't, you know, you, you were doing the same material. You didn't have to sort of make it up. It was there mm. and it was good, and you knew it worked. Um, but yeah, there were times where you just like the freedom of, of being able to make a bit up. But what I find it. interesting is like Al's character, for instance, the pub landlord. I don't think I, I've ever seen another like in the broad field of stand-up where there's more improvisation because you've created the character it sort of gives you license to improvise in a way yeah. that I think if you're just a stand-up you feel more hidebound to your material. That was, that was, but that all came out of doing when I decided all right I'm gonna really try and make a character work in in, in a cabaret environment and the and the, the if the pub landlord if I, if this bloke went on stage he would react to where he was yeah he would talk he would talk necessarily talk to people who, uh, uh, at the front and I read, I read ages ago. I read um, David Mamet on, on acting. True and, you and know, false. Yeah, I love that book. It's a fascinating book, yeah. and and because um, I because because I love his writing. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, what's he got to say about this? And his whole his whole thing is that action action di dictates character. What you do is who you are. As far as as yes. far as someone first encountering you. Yeah, so backstory is irrelevant. All this sort of things. He's, 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 you know, he's very sort of, he's very sort of uh, firm on that idea. So I thought, well, if you're on the stage, the, the things you say to people, the way you deal with them, will tell you more about character, especially if you're 
trying to limb one in a real rush, which is when you come on stage in cabaret and you've got, you've got to let everyone know exactly what's going on immediately. So you need either to talk to people in a way that tells you what kind of person they're watching, yeah, or do a line that does the same thing. Yeah, and the first one fits the character better than the second, and and it it. it and then it and then it just sort of took over as a way yeah. of as a way of delivering the character far more effectively than, than uh, often than the material because the well, material it's true, isn't it? if you're there's a always a gear change like 35 minutes in you, and you can hear my on a bad night you can hear the gears grind while I'm trying to like yeah, go yeah. all right we're, we're switching from the improv now to well, when uh, you did the sitcom and oh, everyone yeah. else was scripted around you were you scripted or oh did I you was just, scripted and oh, that, so it was yeah. scripted and that and that was a sort of um, that was a sort of. Uh, uh, Surrender. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll run the water. Well, you were up. you were shot down the thing, but the mm. it, it's absolutely true. I think that that character, even in a in any stand up, character is ninety percent of the job. The lines yeah. are almost just sprinkles. They're hundreds and thousands yeah. on the top. The, the yeah. meat of it is what is this POV? You know, what am yeah. I saying? But with Mammy, I think it's quite interesting with acting. And this is one thing that I think is different, maybe with stand up. Is that if you're going to? I mean, Mamet is addressing people who are going to be in a drama. Let's say it's like yeah. Death of a Salesman, one of the classic American dramas. Yeah. That's a point at which character has demonstrated that old Aristotelian thing, right? We are that which we do repeatedly. It's habit, you know, that, yeah. that, that is who we are. But if in order for it to be a drama, one day they have to get up and do something different. They have to. They have to break. Mm. their routine you have to establish the routine and traditionally it's page 27 isn't it of the yeah. script when when something happens and they're forced off their rails but if if you're a stand-up you don't get to do that you you, you and, and if you the, the pub landlord over the course of two hours doesn't actually go on a journey at all does he he leaves the stage exactly the same man he walked onto it yeah but i think that um that's what people are like yeah, I, agree. <laughs> I think, I think well, you know one of the one of the sort of great dummies uh we sell ourselves is that life is like drama where we grow and change and at the at the end of a, an experience with someone else yeah, yeah. um you know you, you um rich herring who wrote who wrote time general piece I wrote, we used to joke about this a lot you know you've changed your shirt is the extent to which you might change um mm. and and you know this is the seinfeld thing is that people don't shift yeah but in comedy see because i think I think in comedy, one of the things that, um, that people always get wrong is they say it relies on surprise. And I think it, it, relies, being, it relies on being surprised by someone you trust. Yeah. So it, it, it rely, actually, it relies on trust. You have to like the com comedian, you have to buy their point of view or buy into their point of view or at least be able to um, relate to it. Yeah. And that's why they make you laugh. Yeah. Not because, because, because surprise now would be me flipping the table over and, and <laughs> none, none, none would find that funny. <laughs> You, you, you know, and I think, I think yeah, yeah. This, uh, uh, which is also how things bleed into the idea that comedy needs to be shocking, and it doesn't. It's simply one of the things at its disposal. For me, comedy is always about believability. Once you believe a character, once you really get the kind of the basic rules of believability, you can put that character anywhere you want. Yep. Mm. But if you if you don't believe it or you feel the artifice, it's not funny. Mm. Do you, do you, do you, it, mm. it takes up on your, what you're saying because you know you just said that it's a, it's a character some, has to do something differently. It's not necessarily that character has to be given a different situation, yeah. in which you know absolutely how he's going to behave, yeah. and, and, and the, 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 the expectation yeah. of what's going to happen, and the, the, the delight and the looking forward to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, it's, it's the I'm moment, isn't it? The frozen moment that. You, you know, can put Frank Spencer on the moon, <laughs> but you will believe yeah. it because it's Frank Spencer. You know how he does that make? Do you I'm not going to do Frank Spencer. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's too, well, well, so when you do done. Mrs. Thatcher, we're Everyone all doing says it that these days. Yeah. Oh, he, do your Frank Spencer. he managed to I'm get a complaint. Did you see that? Frank <laughs> Spencer got a complaint. Yes, a BBC got a, complaint. A BBC complaint this week. For this week, for, Frank for, Spencer from 1979. Is it or something? Oh, stop it! The P word. The P word was used. <laughs> well, it was the end of days when League of Gentlemen had to uh, apologise for the. Well, um, a I mean, mm. I mean, you see, like with John Cleese, okay? Yeah. So the major in Forty Towers, and yes. it, uh, the famous sort of racist thing that he yeah. ultimately uh, actually cut out. I think he agreed to cut yeah. out. Yeah. And you think when you're watching that, you you surely you know that Cleese is is sending up the major. He's yeah. saying that there are people who are. Not only they will defend their racism, but say, no, 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 they, they have mm. a kind of hierarchy. So, no, I'm not talking about those foreigners, yeah. I'm talking yeah. about yeah. those yeah. foreigners. So, and I it's interesting, the N word is, is a very interesting phenomenon, isn't it, in society? Regardless of how you feel about it, like personally, 
it's a very interesting for there's never been anything quite like this there have been rude words sorry yes still sorry go on there have been some very rude words and there have been some um restrictions on what you can say on television and so on but there's never been a word that sort of allocated to certain people and 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 disbarred from other people and i'm not questioning the rights or wrongs of it but it is interesting how that encounters comedy and, and, and archive comedy and, and what, what it says of our past well, exactly. and how it, it, you know, it creates something that feels an awful it's lot like... It's the Bayeux tapestry, you know, you yeah. have to be able to look back on, on you know, and think yeah. that all it, 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 it's, it's um, social documentary, isn't it, when you see comedy that you sort of go, ooh, fine. Yeah, people say, well, if it was wrong now, it was wrong then. I'm not sure, because, you know, times change, and Definitely. I think values, at least the times change, values don't, but I think values I think, do. I mean, for me personally, the N-word would have been shocking at any point in my mm. lifetime if it was on a sitcom. I can't remember ever seeing it used. Well, um, but there are certain other terms, for instance, you know, uh, Frank Spencer's example, which... He didn't the use the N-word, did he? No, it was I puff. The word was puff. Oh, right. He's called a puff oh, by, I, I think, a boy... Oh, I P-word. What, like pedo or something? No. No. no the, other, okay. the other P-word. The other P-word. I'm trying to think what that might be, but I can't really think what we'll it is. We'll write it down for you later. Oh, what a, a, a racial, yeah, racial slur. slur. Sorry, yes. yes, yeah, yeah, okay. No, it wasn't that one. Uh, again, I can imagine that appearing, possibly, just about. Certainly in sitcoms of that time. But it's interesting, I mean, Porridge, for instance, which has stood the test of time the most of most, most sitcoms, well, there is an environment where the, where the actual air would have been thick with racial and homophobic slurs more than most, right? Jail. Yep. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm never actually served time, but I'm kind of guessing. <laughs> you know those years. They managed to do it without <laughs> any of that. I don't think there's hardly any episode of Porridge which, which, um, which offends... They invented their own words, like, like look. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, um, or naff. Guys, actually, yeah. naff. I don't know whether, whether Princess Anne took it from Porridge or Porridge <laughs> from Stanley Ardian. Therefore... Well, there's, therefore. A, there's a strong history of that, though, isn't there? Yeah. Of, of substituted words. The Goon Show is full of um, is full of uh, words that Milligan made up because he couldn't use proper swear words. Which ones? Oh I've said that now, and I can't. And I, I none spring to mind. But basically, he was always he was playing cat and mouse permanently. Yeah. yeah. With um, thank you. With the, you know, with, fracking with the census. was invented as one of those, and it was used. Yes, in it's in Battlestar Galactica. One, yeah, frack, exactly. Frack yeah. Is, is, yeah. It's the word they used for the F word. I don't even and know what chuffing. the rules are about. <laughs> Jeremy Hardy used to call the F word the fuck W. I think I just used the fuck W. <laughs> I think That's Jerry Sadovitz uh, actually referred to the cunt word on BBC Two once. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, That's shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was the last. That was at the time the hardest word, but I think actually now the N word would trump that, wouldn't it? Yeah. In terms yeah. of, you know, if you were to use it, you would well, have. Well, motherfucker. Yeah. Um, it seems to deliver. There used to be a list in yes, within well, the radio, yeah, and motherfucker was number two. I've got it they? pinned up in my loo, the ITV list. Right. Um, well, well, ITV is a different list. No, it, 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 it's the C word, motherfucker, fuck. And then, and then you, and then you, you yeah, there's yeah, a lower hierarchy off, where you can yeah. trade some bollocks for a shit. And yeah, yeah, vulgarity rather than. Yeah. yeah. It's a great thing to have in your loo. <laughs> Somebody goes in there, they read the list, and I think they're in real trouble. Ah. Um, <laughs> sure. I think it's out of date though. Though it's quite quite a while ago. I got it. It's 2018. I got it. 2017. I, got I it think this. motherfucker has been almost completely de degraded and deweaponized and denatured. Yeah. But I don't quite know what the process has been. But it is, if it were to be taken seriously, incredibly offensive. Clearly, you know. I mean, it's more offensive than the other two brief words because it actually contains an instruction or a, a suggestion of a behaviour rather than just a, a <laughs> comparison, you know. Is it? <laughs> Edible. 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 That's exactly. You. When you're in a soap like, um, well, like EastEnders and you can't have any swear words in, that, that's ridiculous because, you know, they, they, they see yeah. themselves as sort of, you know, holding the mirror up to nature and you have, they do make ridiculous words like chuffing. Yeah. yeah. But it's a really Blimey. interesting thing as to who polices all this, and I think it's it's gonna it really affects what we do. So I mean, like the other day, Richard Osman with Christmas, uh, Easter, sorry, it was Easter. And he did uh, he did a poem about Easter eggs and and, and, and a thing about diabetes and you know, <laughs> shit and stuff like that. Yeah. Boy, the thread afterwards was people demanding that he apologise and saying my daughter or my son has this and do and and when he didn't delete the tweet, they said shame on you. I thought you were better than that. So and it started to get really. 
kind of bullying the other way around. And, yeah, yeah. And that, but that sent me in two directions. And I thought, well, actually, I learned from from, the, from their objections. I thought, oh, okay, so diabetes isn't as straightforward as I thought it was, and maybe and I've learned some from that. But nevertheless, it's this idea that that about policing comedy and yeah. uh, you know who so who objects and if they object strongly enough and, and if they're offended strongly enough do does the next generation have to be much more careful about how they write because some people and it's something that Ricky Gervais was talking about in another context about people who mistake the target of the joke yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. for, 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 for the subject for of the joke yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, you know um, Let's say to the N word when Frankie Boyle picked up the phone and said, uh, Ministry of Defence Department of N bashing. And, and he was taken to court for racism, uh, literally taken to court <coughs> for racism. Because what he was obviously trying to do was sending up and saying that the, bunch of, that the yeah. Ministry of Defence were a bunch of racists. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, because uh, so that was, an, and of course, you know, he, he, he won the case. But, um, you know, People it, have it, lost it, their jobs the for generation. things like that, though, haven't they? Where yeah. they've used the word in a, in, in the context where they're you know, well. I once had a television kicked over in a gallery on because of a joke I changed. Wow! Um, I did. Remember Saturday Night Live? They made an effort yes. to do that. Yeah. Right? Yes. And I think it was Humphrey Barclay was producing it, and I had a joke. I used to do the, when I first started doing the pub and and and, and it, when I first started doing, it, I was a bit young to do it. It would sometimes be touch and go as to whether it would fire and. But I had a, a set of rules, which was a thing. The character had a bunch, you know, it's just the way things are. I just kind of put up with it. It was a thing. You, I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, just the way things are. And so it would be sort of Coke's better than Pepsi. But then the last one was you can't have gays in the army, but it's all right for Michael Portillo to be defence secretary. <laughs> as, my, as, my, as my payoff, which dates me, the joke, and values, and mores, and, yeah, and everything, right? And they hired, they booked me. To, to play this, and they said, "But you're not, uh, you're not doing that punchline." I said, "Yeah, but the <laughs> what, can't do the rest of the <laughs> can't, really, can't really do the rest of it without the punchline, right? Yeah. It doesn't really kind yeah. of work out." Yeah, you're absolutely not doing the punchline, right? So I get on, and I remember Brian Adams's band are over there, and 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 you know, when people who come to studio recordings were there in front of me rather than an audience. Yeah. And I got on, and I just couldn't get. It. I just not was not firing in the studio, and I felt my mouth go dry. And I started to speed up and all that sort of stuff. And I yeah. start on them. It's the way things are. And I thought, well, fuck I'm this. Gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it because I have because because otherwise this is you know I don't I don't care about your program. I care about how it's going for me right now. Yeah. Um, so I get you know I get to that line and the place goes Rah! you know like <laughs> that's what he's trying to do. I see now oh. you know like the audience the, the, the light bulbs all over the audience. They all laugh and all that. And I was thrown out of the. Frog marched out of, uh, wow. out of, uh, it was on the South Bank, you know. Yeah, yeah. God bless it. London um, Studios. Marched out of the London Studios, and apparently the TV was kicked over in the control booth. Um, Bloody hell. And it was going out live, literally. It was like, going out live, no so, so there was, there was literally yeah. nothing they could do about it. Fantastic. Well, that's that's exactly the use of live as well. That's the whole point. Saturday Night Live yeah. is trying to trade on its dangerous, exactly. nothing, well, anything could happen. But, but nothing, but nothing exactly. happened. No. Um, because because if you're Michael Portillo, you're not going to go draw yeah. attention to that, are you? Yeah. You know, Streisand it. Exactly. You're not going to do that. And and no one complained because after all, there wasn't a Twitter thread immediately after. Half composed of people going, yeah, stick it to the man. Yeah, yeah. And half of, of people were going, how dare you say that? Um, you it's really fascinating. The whole thing because it is, it really, and you know, in, in Richard's case, I thought people were really angry about it, and then they brought the children into it. So well, well, thank you. Know, my son is, is being this on Twitter? And, yeah. Oh well, my son is being stigmatised on, tw on, yeah. on, on yeah. the playground and stuff. And. Um, I, so if you ever get it in the back of the cab is the obvious thing and I always distrust the back of the cab think Stuart Lee has made a career out of uh, like I yeah. think imaginary cab driver saying ridiculously bigoted things <laughs> I just I never experienced that yeah. but I have had several they usually pick me up from the Dorchester after a corporate they go what's the new set then and I go I'm a stand up I just entertained a bunch of bankers or something go oh, I tell you what, comedy's hard these days hard oh, because you can't say nothing can you <laughs> and my response to them is usually slightly defensive and I go the other way because I'm just a contrarian really I don't know what I really think about anything yeah. But I usually say, well, in the same way that the Finally larger the admission. island, yes, the island of knowledge, the shoreline of wonder, you know, and again, the larger the island of political correctness, the more interesting the shoreline of the edge, you know, there's always an edge. Yes. 
there's always something where you can play with, you know, whether it is, am I allowed to say, they're all cannibals, aren't they, really? The trouble is when it gets so fast that you, nobody knows where the edge is and then everyone just kind of freezes. In, that's, that's when it's dangerous, when nobody knows where the edge is anymore and everyone is afraid that they might suddenly plummet through thin ice. Do you but know what it, I mean? It was interesting, because I went to see Ricky, just before this last lockdown, Ricky did what was going to be his live tour, he did it at the Forum, and I, yeah. I was very lucky to go and see it, and it was brilliant, but it was... So it was very trans, it was just very transfer. I mean, it yeah, was just yeah. almost like, good for you, mate. He had no, <laughs> there was no boundary. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. It was like going back was to the it? 70s. Really? Uh, yeah, but like, Except and that was that its humour. Trans wasn't, didn't even exist then, I suppose, but. I mean, as in the lack of fear. Yeah, um, right. There was just no fear, it was just yeah. fearless. It was, it was, it was. Well, this is, but this is the thing. The more, the more people demand edges. Yeah. And say, these, these are lines you can't cross, the more, the, the, the temp, they're offering lines to cross. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's what's kind of effectively happening. On the other hand, though, I mean, I get I get asked this a lot, and and I, I went I, I went through a long period with the pub landlord of um, being told I was either encouraging the BMP, or, or you know, or or normalising, or, 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 well, or, 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 or belittling um, the BMP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BMP. Well, you were doing or, that, to be fair, or, 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 or whatever. Well, like, I remember oh, being seeing anti-national, you, like, well, well, being anti, well, being unpack, a being unpacked. Well, so I mean, there's several wrong ends of the stick, you know. Like, yeah. um, uh, like, the, the, I remember a review where we, I mean, we really did. When when I played the O2, we really did hand out the uh, Union Jacks. Ironically, we genuinely, yeah. we genuinely did. We thought this would look really funny, and it did. It looked really, really funny <laughs> from the stage. Jacks, but from the stage, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. But then you get the review going. Oh, it's like a BMP rally, which then yeah, makes yeah. you wonder. Has the reviewer been to a BMP well, rally and is drawing on is drawing on? Do you remember Olympia, nineteen thirty six, Oswald oh, Mosley no, no, up there, no, no, and all no, the little people waving? No, but I don't anyway, remember. But anyway, that. but anyway, but, the, but the, the, all the, there's all the wrong ends of the stick, and and the thing is, is my audience, no, my exactly. audience, know perfectly well exactly. what's going on. They know perfectly well why they bought a ticket. Exactly. Although they do now, I do remember seeing you. You remember Alaric, who yeah, used yeah, to book yeah, gigs in yeah, East yeah, London, yeah, Brentwood, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was a great lad. He used to book great I acts, but some of his audience, they weren't quite as clued up as Alaric was. No. And they did come and see you one night, I remember that, and there was at least half the crowd were, c- were confused and then turned against you. Yep. They thought they'd come to see but somebody. But isn't that brilliant? Yeah, of course yeah, exactly. it is. Exactly. Of course, yeah, that's, that's like, electricity. that's exactly that's the, that's the, that's right. The, the yeah. sport of it yeah. as well. But when you stood as a, for an election in Canada, so what did Farage make of you? What, what well, you know <laughs> what, you know what? Um, did what? you think, I thought you were about well, 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 what was, what was sort was of up. funny about that is it, is oh. it started off that all started off yep. really well Amazing. with a. Whoa. Oh my God. Oh, I thought just, that was for everybody. So did yeah. I. But that's not for everyone, is yeah. it? It's meat. quite it a lean be. meat. It just bear that in mind. It's it, quite a lean. But it started I off. Really, with, I won't be lean after a meat. He said, oh, at last, some proper con- competition in the constituency thing. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's t- he, he gets the joke. He gets the joke. And then, and then two weeks later, he's on Mar going, yes, it's another. Easlington lefty comedian. Well, yeah. first of all, I, mate, I live in Chiswick, right? Mm. Do you do your basic on me? Easlington is like whiteness, though. It well, doesn't mean you're white. It means you have oh, no, internalised. No, no. It's, it's, it's a mindset. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We know what we mean by Islington. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's we right. know it's, exactly yeah. what we location. mean by Islington. When we say kill Islington, we <laughs> don't mean <laughs> kill Islington. Yeah. Kill all your Islington. Yeah. Um, but 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 and then he, and it, and it sort of did, it was a shame because I thought, yeah. well, you know, we're gonna. Uh, we'll be able to do this, you know, in the, with the sport it's intended, and it, yes. and it pretty quickly. Um, oh my gosh, this know, looks oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah. Anyway, amazing. Well, forget the ad. Oh, that is to share. What, 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 what was odd in Fanny Thank is some that, people, been some been people would yell at me in the street, going, "What you're doing is totally disgraceful." Yeah, and other What's people that? would take yeah. it to one and say, "Thanks for doing this." You know, it's all no, too, it's all a bit serious here. I was going to, yeah, have it all lightened up is refreshing. I tell you what, that's what needs net right now. It has all got a bit serious now. I, got, I will say this for Farage, even though I, I would have some strong criticism for him on some front. I think he probably has got a decent sense of humour, but he's also, he's been sort of media well, trained, thing, isn't well, he? Thing, you know what well, I mean? Like, how do think, you play it? Well, I also think the thing I, you know, the, the thing I came away with mainly, um, uh, I came away from that whole thing with a huge sympathy for politicians. Which yeah, is the yeah, last yeah. Thing yes. I, so I went, yeah, in with, I went in with none and came out with a great deal, because because Thank you. whatever he might think of me running, He'll have had it's, yeah. people in his elbowing him in the ribs, going, "You can't stand for this." Well, you taking can't. The piss. 
You're, you know, this is this is the what real thing. What people say about comedians, you can't say anything now. I mean, it's ten times as true for com uh, for politicians. Yeah, they yeah, cannot they cannot ideas. express an God. idea, a new idea that hasn't been tested. Well, yeah, and everyone wants you to fail. And yeah. everybody, you know, you get killed now. Yeah, it's yeah, really literally different. killed. There is that as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, just talking about this, I'm sorry to bring it back to the acting thing, but do you remember when Carol Churchill wrote um, a thing on the bankers, Serious Money? I don't know. Okay, yes. so she wrote a play, um, a yes. bit like um, Harry's uh, Loads of Money. She wrote a play called Serious Money, which is basically taking the piss out of bankers and that kind of like, you know, that kind of character. And the only people that came to see that show or were who bankers. could afford it were bankers. Yeah. And it, I suppose that's the thing with you, isn't it? It's a bit like... Yeah, but, Do you but, end up appealing to the people you're well, taking I, the piss out of? Yes. Who knows? But it's also it's not an argument against taking the piss out of them. No. I've never I mean, your idea totally of audience are people on that where they they know it, but they know they're being taken the piss out of. That's, that's what you want, they, isn't they it, really? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, or or that they, they kind of know it, but they, so still there's a layer. It's like John Cleese, he, he had an accountant, and he, he uh, sort of invited him to come along and watch a Python show. <laughs> and there's a great long sketch about accountants yeah. sending up accountants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he realised as they were doing it, <laughs> and he thought, oh my God, this is all about accountants, and it's going to really annoy. So afterwards, he came up and said, so did you enjoy the show? And the accountant said, yeah, I loved it. And he said, so what even, even, even the sketch about accountants? And he said, yeah, I loved that. And he said, but I thought that you, I, mean, I thought you were, he said, no, 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 no I'm a chart of accountants. <laughs> so, you know, even though the sketch, it was kind of, no, no, no. So, and, and, well, and those people. people so unless you actually sew somebody's name tag onto that, the joke. But that's, but that is so the perfect. pub landlords I meet go, yeah, the bloke up at the, yes. The bloke up at the, you know, the Iron Horse, he's like that. He's like, I'm not. I'm I went not. to, um, <laughs> I, my parents live in Norfolk and on the way back once, maybe 15 years ago, I was quite intrigued by um, Tony Martin. Do you remember the yeah, 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 shot yeah, yeah, yeah. that in the back? And I thought, I'll go and try and find this community and see what it looks like, because sometimes you can only really understand these stories when you understand the geography around it, you know, the yeah, psychogeography. Yeah, yeah. Psycho, yeah. Anyway, I went to, it's Emmett, wasn't it? I think he was, he was from, uh, mm. like into the flatlands. And every village you went to and every town you went to and every person you stopped and asked, they were like, oh yeah, that's that lot that, that down there. We're not like that round here. Yeah. You know, there was this kind of distancing permanently, and it wasn't just geographic distancing, it was like a sentimental, political, you know, we're not of that mindset here. So you when could, does, you that could definitely does that mean we do that stuff? And people, I think, I think I, it's a human thing, totally, yeah. People laugh at that thing because they can still, they can still convince themselves that they're la even they re recognise themselves, they recognise something and even like more so, mm -hmm. the more you get into it, again, reference my father, you know, who's a keen aviation enthusiast and he's been to air shows, where the where the uh, the UKIP used to the UKIP I'm saying <laughs> the, the UKIP the UKIP I was going to say the BMP and then I switched <laughs> <laughs> UKIP uh, used to have a, a a little caravan quite often at air shows because oh they would God. have a lot of aviation enthusiasts who remember Spitfires and they associate that with a certain degree of independence <laughs> and so they'd be handing out leaflets and they'd often be dressed in sort of wartime RAF outfits and so on and my dad would like roll his eyes at that you know but it was it was a it was a a subset of his community. To most of us, they, they would have all been chucked in together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, you know, that's people deep. who go to air shows are racist. Yeah, that's but deep. it's like, it's got a little that's bit deep. more. <laughs> I went to David Davis once, uh, at some studio or whatever, and it was just after Jean-Claude Juncker had mm. done something or other. Um, and, you know, he'd, uh, he'd just done something really stupid. And so bumping into David Davis, I said, I said, oh, Juncker, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit strange. And, and, and he said, yeah, he's a great name, though. <laughs> <laughs> and you realise that it was exactly that kind of trash, kind of trash <laughs> mag reading so thing that, that, that David Davis felt that Juncker was terribly funny. <laughs> and I just thought, I really... Oh, my God. Oh, the world needs to know that. It's it's really funny. Funny. That is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Juncker was a comedy aircraft even when it started, wasn't it? I mean, it was already, you know. Well, oh. the procurement on the JU-88 went quite wrong, um, we and we, we have an episode about that. Um, was it not trialled out on the Spanish Civil War? Was that not one of the... Yes, um, it was, but what yeah. happened was... Uh, uh, <laughs> Come on, I want to know. Well, no, no, the, 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 well, what, what happens... What this happened, is a theme. This is what? like Al's... This is the segment of this podcast, well, which, what, which yeah. should, has to have a hyperlink. What happened <laughs> was... <laughs> what you did was... The podcast, yeah. to find out the was, procurement. The they, they, yes, they invent... The, the, they, they come up with a spec for it, and the, the, the initial type is quite good, so yeah. they add things to the spec, and they try to get it to do everything. And oh. by the time, by the time they're done with it, it can't do any of the things <laughs> to full satisfaction. And there's a there's a moment where they become obsessed with dive bombing. 
right. in the Nazi high command. And there's a guy called Udet, who was Goering's best mate, who was a drunk and a pr complete proper, or pissed all the time, every single meeting, <laughs> totally, totally loud. Blitz as well? Uh, uh, no, not Blitz. No, no although, okay. you know, we could, there's an episode about that book as well. But, but, but basically, he, he gets it in his head that everything needs to be able to be used as a dive bomber, because the dive bombers have been very successful in Poland. The Stuka. Yeah. It's built as a dive bomber. Yeah. So, so basically, they get a thing that's supposed to fly f straight and level very high up and try to figure out how to make it dive at extreme angles low down. And the, Just the, the, double the ailerons, isn't it? Well, well <laughs> and, 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 and they keep doing this. And, uh, uh, and then Udet eventually, he killed himself because he couldn't cope with the responsibility of having... Oh. having well, I, 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 oh, no, 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 Kills me. It's a shame he couldn't live. It's the first, little little it's the first yeah. dudette lunch I've ever done. The point done at which you are able to got, forgive him. Yeah. Oh my god. There were so <laughs> many others that should have gone before him. <laughs> yeah. God. That is incredible. But also, they run out of steel. It's almost like the Nazis were this extraordinary. I don't want it to become a Nazi podcast because there are enough of them. Oh. But it, they? they were an extraordinary combination of. Like like highly efficient and like they combine people no. in and at the same time complete nonsense. Efficiency does oh, no, not, not, enter not into efficiency. It. No, okay. no, 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 because it's always run. Well, I mean, they won some battles. It was all. I well, mean, yes, you know. but 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 um, uh, the, the short version is the French army hand the entire thing. Yeah. To the to the Germans in 1940. That I, so. and, and and I never blame 12, the French 12, for that either. No, no, nor do I. There's twelve days. We we had an economic historian on the on the podcast uh, not long ago who was not fascinating. Adam. A guy called Philip. Philip's Pace and Brian, okay. and his whole thesis is everything you everything you think you know about battles is a nonsense. Yeah. Battles don't matter. He says, and he, he thinks there's only one battle without a foregone conclusion in the whole of the Second World War, ooh, ooh, ooh. and that's the Battle for France, where the where, where oh, okay. the, the, the Germans get across the. Mers I would say that had the most well, was foregone con conclusion of all for me because the French had no stomach, that and that's what matters. <laughs> You've got to read your <laughs> Tolstoy, Jeezy. mate. The no, French had no stomach. Sentence. Yeah. Jesus, did surrender, monkey. But it's fair enough. This is my follow-up. I don't blame them. They'd lost the flower of their manhood to an unimaginable yeah. degree, like twenty years earlier. Mm. You know, but the the unwillingness to to like sack, like just throw yes. everything onto the you know. But the great there's you, a Robin, you don't accept that. The great Robin but Williams Britain, line wasn't Britain it? Britain was the, never the, tested the, in the, that the way. The Germans turn up at the border <laughs> and the French go table for four. <laughs> 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 Probably racist now, but it's, mm. it's perfect as a yeah. joke. Yeah. I mean, it's as much to do with internal table. communications <laughs> problems well, and decisions. I think I was at <laughs> least like re like really embarrassingly far into adulthood at least before I realised there was any aspect or element of war other than just fighting. I mean, like supply lines, logistics, economy, mm. yeah, yeah. steel and iron and co <coughs> coal. You know, Hitler aiming for the oil fields in Russia. All of that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Just, while, at, you while, learn that. while at the same time having no way mm. had he captured them of ever getting the oil back to Germany. No, yeah, no totally. plan at all. Because yeah. it's all this idea of efficiency is essentially you've someone with the mentality of an 11 year old boy yeah. mm. running a country who goes, I don't yeah, like them. They were kind of like caught you know, up with myth and all bringing the, the fake fiction, units. I love yeah. when you watch Downfall again. Mm. Yeah. And the fast. Like Brexit, yeah. isn't it? It's a really caught through to, <laughs> oh, how did we get the oil back? Oh, no. Mm. Yeah, well, Do you think that the vaccine for Argo is like a, is the battle for France in terms oh, of Brexit? It's an, <laughs> it's an early victory. Oh, <laughs> oh, it couldn't, it's, it's come as a bad time to, for Remainers, but then you get into, as soon as you get into Twitter again, yeah. you find people say, no, no, it's, it's, it's not an EU thing. It's only 16 countries over there and it breaks down again. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. We're all going to be taken over by China very soon anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Do you matter, still do you know. Twitter? Oh, less so obviously coming. I'm very busy I mean, on it's like we're the only I don't know that why we haven't just accepted our fate at this yes. point. It's actually getting really <laughs> beyond now. Mm. What's that? Mm. Twitter. I had a podcast for a while called Trolls. You see, I had my own. I was an early adopter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it, very good it was too. It, it was quite good. Uh, high quality of guests, Simon. Um, no, I'm I really high quality. Do not get the call. Oh, God, so delicious. Go on after you. Go on after you. But uh, it was, uh, yeah. Can we just have a little Actually. round of applause for the food? Oh, the, the food, food is beyond. I do just say. Bro, like the James best meal. Really best 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 really best. I feel like weeping that like I'm eating something that somebody else cooked. I know, it's right. just that's amazing. Really this this whole really podcast is, is made possible by so El Portico restaurant. El Portico, I'm coming. Oh so my good. God. But actually, on a, on, a, on a link, exactly what we're talking yeah. about, on the vaccine thing. So, 
Mine was the at deer, the time, Rory. Hey, oh, yeah, sure, sorry. But at the time, <laughs> uh, so of course it was always said that, that Europe was in a strange position, or some countries in Europe were saying, we don't want the AstraZeneca, we don't want the AstraZeneca. But at the same time, other parts were saying, why haven't you given us supplies? So it reminded me of the Woody Allen joke in um, Annie Hall. Two women in the restaurant. And one says, isn't the food here terrible? The yeah. other one says, yes. And, and such small portions. portions. are so small. Well, it goes to Twitter. And brilliant. boom. Yeah. It, I get all these people saying, no, no, it's not Europe's fault. It's not you. And I thought, oh, God, it's you're not. You know, I was a joke. <laughs> you know, and one I, of the great jokes, one of the... One of the but you're not allowed to mention Woody Allen it's, anymore. It goes with no, the, it's a Yogi, that's another Yogi thing. bed. Nobody drives in New York anymore because the traffic's too bad. <laughs> uh, there, there, there's something about jokes like that that they're more than jokes. They're like they get, uh, they're, you, they're like Zen codes. When you write one of those, yeah. And you must have written one of those along with it. That, I mean, I've never realised where run, I stole one of the I've jokes I wrote. I've never got into the, a the paradox quite that uh, perfectly. Everyone's, everyone's driving their kids to school to make sure the kids aren't run over by the kid, yeah, people yeah, driving yeah. their kids to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can set up a loop like that. Yeah. Your, your, you know, perfect joke space. Yeah. If say the camera, it's all about the, the impressions. If you get the voice, people laugh at the voice. But if you get a line that goes in the voice and says it, and the, the best... The, the, the only time I ever did it really was, Dave, was David Cameron. So you know, people said, "Are you going to? Are you going to make the rich richer? Are you going to make the poor poorer?" I think we managed to do both. <laughs> <laughs> See, because it works. <laughs> no, <laughs> it works sort of thing, and it's that That's as you say. Good. You, the, the thing with impressions is, and, 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 and take a quick straw poll on this: when you first hear somebody's version of somebody, the childlike delight oh. at, at the sheer the sheer like magic of it i can't even appreciate a joke for a good 10 or 15 oh, seconds after well, that do, well, do you have to matt, sort of matt ford's a good buddy of mine and yeah. and, and you you ring him up and go please talk to me as donald trump <laughs> <laughs> He was a political comedian for quite a while he before he brought the, before the, and his impressions are really good. That surprised me. But because we, we all, I always tease him about, um, so I, I, I was on the, the, the last run of, the most recent run of Spitting Image, um, writing on that in this hellish Zoom writers rooms that would last all day. Mm. Um, and Matt did Trump and Boris on that. And so the last couple of weeks, when it's obvious Trump's going to lose, I'm, I'm, I, was, I, I just love it. I say to him, ah, you're, yeah, out, yeah. you're out of a job. I just think it's, it's true. You know, but, but, the, but, the, but the, the grim reality, isn't it? Because he, he used to do he used to do this fantastic Miliband. And then, of course, Miliband yeah. goes by the wayside. Oh, yeah. yeah. He spent five years oh, on this guy. I mean, this must be... A, oh, Jan Ravis did a whole uh, lovely Radio 4 programme about it called Losing My Voice. Was it and Theresa it was May? How, yeah, exactly. She amazing. was so amazing. good. The Theresa May voice she had was just it so... It was wonderful. And yeah. it was just about losing... Literally, it was about losing your voice. And it is a thing. And of course, you know, we're going to take a while to get... I do... In that, in that, in that sense alone, I really miss Donald Trump, as do the news companies, yeah. because, you know... I, I get the Washington Post sort of stuff in the thing, and now I don't bother to read it because. But I would always read it in the audience because. Yeah. The, oh, what's he up to now? The great what's thing with Trump's now? voice was as well. You could, you could. It was so well known and so extraordinary. You could then move into like Peter Serafinovich, who did that oh, the camp the sassy the version, one. the sassy one. It was the greatest voice ever. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. funny. It was never a you couldn't voice. have done that if it had, that was a brilliant so an impression of an impression. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where we're going. We're down the rabbit hole. The shadow health secretary is it Ashton? The one who dubbed um, Corbyn in it. I just love his little voice. He's got, he's like, is it? Yeah, he's got that sort of sort of sick, lower sick form. Like there's something so slappable about it, but also quite uh, sweet. I guess if we were doing stuff, we'd have to do it because we, we were. I was very lucky because we did stuff in the sort of 2000s when Labour came to power. Kitty Mugridge once said David Frost wrote, uh, was it Rose Without Trace? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but, but by the time Labour took over in '97, there was Blair, who was doable, Mandelson doable, Cook. Prescott doable, well, Cook doable. Um, Blunkett, was he doable? Blunkett, yes, he was. You could do it. Yeah. We had time with that, and then yeah. people said, "Why? Oh my you, God, why that's do you, amazing! Why do you move? Your, why, why do you move your eyes? Because, and that's a difficult thing. We're back to where we were. Yeah, at. yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, we're back round. Would you be able because, to do that now? Well, yeah, I'd have to think about it. Uh, but, 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 trust me, if you're made up as Blunkett and you're in a suit and, so, and you and you look at somebody directly. You know, it doesn't. It, it, it reads wrong. You don't read it as, as Blunkett. And what was nice um, about Blunkett, from your point of view, was he was himself quite not. Oh, he was non PC. He was quite. No. He was quite strident in well, some respects. I remember wasn't the he? thing. The key to Blunkett was suddenly that when um, Harold Shipman hanged himself in prison, the news came out very early one morning, and Prescott and 
Blunkett was going straight to a press conference about something else. And the news had just broken, so the journos knew and he knew that Harold Shipman had killed himself. So Blunkett, he begins the press conference, he says, <coughs> Is it too early to crack open the bottle? <laughs> wow, I remember that. I've forgotten it, but I remember oh, it now you say it. Wow. So yeah. that, so what I did to say Blunkett, I said, yes, he's got that side to him, hasn't he? He's got that side to him. He says, don't pat the dog, you'll have your fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, uh, you sort of think, oh, people, no. are you, is that, how far is that from the, uh, you know, your guide dog, or oh, well, what have they given me, that, you know, that Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. But, I, I, but I, I found an old Parkinson the other day, and I was talking about, you know, about the eyes and saying, I'm not taking the piss out of him because he's blind, I'm taking the piss out of him because he's David Blunkett. But I'm not sure I would even have that conversation no. on Parkinson again because of the risk of it being misinterpreted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless for me, I suppose, it was, it was yeah. absolutely the clear thing. I thought, I thought, am I? Is this? Is this about? And I thought, no, it's absolutely not. Yeah. It's about. I've got to look like him. I've got to look like the character. And I, you know, so I, so I remember what, I wrote a sketch. I don't know. We used to have it because we wrote it at the last minute. We used to have water cues everywhere. And I came in. and I was doing blanket. And so suddenly I thought I had to look, I was looking to see, I, got, I couldn't read the autocue. Because <laughs> <laughs> that meant that my eyes had to, it was, yeah. it was really weird. And, and the <laughs> only thing that mattered to me about that was, does it, does it look like him? Does yeah, it, yeah. As, as the character. And, and, and actually, funnily enough, as the years have gone by, I've, I've grown in admiration for what he is and what he achieved. Yeah, yeah.